He's just driven the green. He yeah. has just driven the green. I guess, hello world, huh? Welcome, everybody, to week 26 of the 2020-2021 PGA season. We are here for the Masters week. Uh, kicked it off a couple days ago with Bucks. If you missed that video or audio pod, you can go check it out. The little... First preview with him, um, originator of the course preview for Gup's Corner. So, had his full breakdown, uh, kind of went through all that, and um, you know, kind of just first look with pricing coming out early, and um, kind of our gut feels more than just the deep dive type stuff. As I said on that pod, I am still going to do a normal smash factor, and here we are on a beautiful Sunday, almost afternoon. Uh, happy Easter, everybody! If you're listening to this out there today on Sunday, uh, if not. You know, it's a Monday. That's fine as well. Big week this week, as always. Uh, first rankings already out. Um, tweaking some. Be doing more updates on that. Um, I'll put version two of the rankings out tomorrow after we get all the end of the Valero uh, data in there. And kind of see where we're sitting there. A couple big question marks already out of the way. Maybe one is John Rahm had his baby, uh, looks like this morning. So that's awesome. Maybe last night I couldn't tell they posted it this morning, but maybe it could have happened last night. Um, that's awesome. I, there wasn't any real comment on him yet as to would he be here. All indications are that with, you know, baby safe, mama safe and all that, he would be there. That's at least the baby's born. So we'll know one way or the other. He may decide not to play, but we at least will know prior to him teeing off. So that question marks out. The Brooks game is, if you read in the Instagrams and Twitter, you would he's there. So I assume he's playing. A um, little more confused on that because just some of the reports were like six to eight months out. Now he's, I mean, I, I don't know. It can't be that bad if he's in Augusta, plans on playing. We'll keep an eye on that, um, but I, I'm going to go as if he's playing. So I kind of two big changes from even when Bucks and I looked at it. Wrapping up Valero, not much to get into yet. Do have some. Pretty good sweat going in there. Um, I'm in second place in two qualifiers for the 444, 444, 4, tickets. Um, so I got that sweat. That'll be exciting. I've been bouncing around the top 20, top 50 in the flop shot, the 200K to first. Uh, have some good lineups there with Spieth, Wallace, um, Hoffman. Hoffman, wow. I mean, he was... If, I mean, close to dead last Thursday night and has just played lights out Friday and Saturday. Seven under yesterday. We got the pre-tourney ticket on him. Would love to see him get there. Have a ticket on Kirk. I don't really see Kirk getting there. He's seven back. You got so many. I mean, I really think it probably comes down to Hoffman, Wallace, or Spieth. That's, I think one of those three win it. Um, could see someone charge. This isn't a course I don't think that will give um, – Dried out a little bit, no rain today. I think it'll play a little tougher. It's a tough course. And so I don't see someone shooting, I mean, five, six under would be a really, really great round today. And even then, just the gap that those three have up top, it'll make it hard for someone to chase them down. It could happen, but I think it'll be Hoffman, Wallace, or Spieth winning it. Obviously, if Hoffman wins it, that'll get him into the Masters. Um, so that'd be big, huge for him. Spieth's already in it. So... Something to watch for there. That'll be the only addition coming in. The, if, whoever wins it, if it's not someone already in it, they will be added to the pool um, probably tomorrow or no later than Tuesday, so we'd have to kind of account for that. Matt Wallace is already in it. Spee's already in it. So out of the three, I'm thinking Hoffman would be the one, and he'd be a great play here. Obviously, he's got a pretty good track record at, at, at Augusta. Betting-wise, like I mentioned, had have Hoffman going. I had some speed doubles and stuff, but um, I don't think the guys that I paired him with uh, – not doubles, Quinella's – uh, are going to get there. So no no big sweat on there. We're really just pulling for Hoffman to get it done today. I kind of love Hoffman to win this week and Spieth next week with our 45-1 uh, to 1 ticket we got pending on that. Promos, we got them all over this week. This is the week to join us. Free seven-day trial if you join any point in time. Use the code MASTERS. You get 30% off any package. If you don't like it after a week, walk away. 
no charge, no harm, no foul. 30% off. Use the code MASTERS. Also gets any gear in the store that you want. This is the last week to get into the March to the Masters promo. Any new sign-up or current sub that upgraded this year, you are in the drawing for the March to the Masters. It has to be an annual package. Um, we're giving away almost $2,000 worth of stuff one week from tomorrow on the Smash Factor. Brand new Tylus driver, set of custom-made Boki SM8 wedges to whatever you want them to look like. Uh, GC gift pack will be given away, including stuff from the Masters. All this is on at Gup's Corner on Twitter. It's the pin picture. You can go take a look at the promo. If you want to give us a try, now's the time to do it. Just pushed out a video of tons of upgrades we've done to the Green Machine lineup optimizer as well. Slowly becoming probably one of the best uh, golf lineup optimizers out there in the industry. And we love it. Bobby's doing a great job. We're only getting better with that thing. And it's got all sports. So when you buy our stuff, it's all sports are included. We're focusing on golf right now. We will be including MLB is in there. Basketball is in there, but we're going to start including uh, the stackability stuff and then slowly m making our way towards NFL where, where we will have full capabilities to stack your players in NFL and college football. So by the time we get to August, that thing is going to be rocking and rolling. No better time to join now. You're locked for life on your price with 30% off. Um, plus you get seven free days to try it out. No better week to try it out than the Masters. Rate and review us on iTunes. I will be giving away um, cash and prizes on Tuesday's pod. I'll be doing my Tuesday tidbits. And it, the winners will come from everybody that's rate and review, reviewed us on iTunes. Just hop over there real quick. Give us a rate and review. If you've already done it, do it again. No harm, no foul there. Um, I'll give away tons of prizes and stuff on that come Tuesday. Wednesday, I'll be giving away more cash and prizes on the movie uh, – Movers and Shakers podcast, and I will choose from people that subscribe to us on uh, YouTube and then like this video and leave in the comment who is your player you want to fade in the 10K range this week. Do that. That gets you in the drawing Wednesday. So both those are free. Jump in, giving away stuff. If you're a member, you know we give away stuff all the time in the Slack. Did some giveaways last night. We'll be doing some more next week as well. Listener League, obviously don't know the winner yet. Uh, last week's winner is, is in. This is the biggest Listener League we've ever had, 700. We are almost half full. It's Sunday. Get in now, three max. Um, biggest pullout we've ever had. Flat payout structures, limited rake. Fill that up. Show DK what we're all about. All right, enough of that. Let's get to this. Again, course preview and all that stuff. Go check out the pod with Bucks. Um, biggest things for me is, is bent greens. We know that. It sounds like everything we've heard just from so far, fast and firm. Um, we know it's not going to play in November, or November at, at all, just different times of the year. Um, so much I, – I, I wouldn't discount it per se um, or, or remove it from what you're looking at because I think playing here still matters. But, you know, course history-wise, course fit-wise, course fit I would, I'm leaning stronger on 2016 through 2019. Weather this week, sunny and warm all week. There are some storms, scattered storms moving in Thursday night. Small chance, 30 40% right now for Friday and Saturday. It doesn't look like anything crazy like weather draw or anything like this. This is a little pop-up spring showers, so I'm not putting a lot into it yet. Um, that'll come Tuesday or Wednesday as we get closer. If it looks like there's a massive advantage from, from Friday's perspective, I don't think Thursday right now nothing will be. I don't even think that the, the storms will get there in time, but we're way out, so we'll take a look at that uh, Tuesday and Wednesday as well. Small chance of rain Sunday morning. Again, nothing major. This isn't some huge major rain system coming through. I think it's just the spring showers that'll come in. It could delay some times and stuff like that, but nothing crazy right now. Cut. Remember, top 50 in ties. The 10 shot rule was removed in November. And when they removed it, they said this is a permanent move going forward. So no more. If you're not familiar, before November, if it was top 50 in ties and anybody within 10 shots also made the cut. So now that that's been removed, it's only top 50 in ties. I'm going to go with a plus two cut um, this year. I think it's going to play much tougher than November and actually tougher than it has the last couple years. I don't think Augusta likes the huge numbers that they've been seeing. I mean, DJ shot 20 under. Then you had 13 under for Tiger, 15 under for Reed. Um, then before that, it was nine under and five under. Spieth, with the, you know, at that time was the record 18 under, or tied the record with Tiger. Um, then before that, eight, nine, 10. You can kind of see, like, like they want to try to bring it in at times. So I'm, I'm going to go with a tougher score this week. I think the winning score is going to be 11 under, and I got the cut plus two. 
Uh, like I mentioned, DJ shot 20 under, but there was only six guys, including him, that shot better than minus 10. So it wasn't like they just stormed this course and went crazy. It was still played tough. Um, DJ's going to try to do what 17 other guys have done already in winning two or more Masters. Um, you know, so there is, you know, this is probably, this is the strongest course history, course fit when you want to look at things of any tournament on tour, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's been played here forever. And, and you also see guys that play way, play well here, do it more than once, not necessarily winning, but also guys just, you know, Brooks hasn't won here. He's always done well here. Um, JT does well. Here. These are also some of the best players in the world. So, you know, a guy, guys can miss cuts at any point in time, but for the most part, you know, Justin Rose, Adam Scott, Paul Casey, these guys tend to play well here. Even Reed, he's played well here, but he's got a 49th, a missed cut before he won it, then a 36th and a 10th. So it's not a deadlock, but um, definitely something we rate higher this week than most times. Jack obviously holds the record with six Masters and then Tiger with five. Prior, past winners, if you're not familiar, this is one time I don't feel like I need to do that. Obviously, recently, DJ, Tiger, Reed, Garcia, Danny Willett, Spieth, Bubba, Scott, Bubba, um, Charles Schwartzel, and Phil are the are the ones that have won since 2010. Key stats for me, um, I mean, I think you, you obviously need that all-around game, ball striking, great drives for me and our, our stats. I'm going to use that a lot. So a mixture of accuracy plus length, um, opportunities inside 12 feet, par five um, DK scoring for me is huge this week and stroke gain irons. And I do that to bring in the around the green game. Cause that's our, our stat of approach and around the greens. It's so crucial here. Um, and a lot of it does come down to some gut feels. I mean, you're going to have very tight pricing. We have very tight pockets of player exposure and ownership percentages. I mean, it's, it's going to be fairly spread out across the board. There'll be a couple areas where we have some leverage if we want to take it, but you know, you put it all in there and it's still going to, you're still going to have to make some tough calls, especially depending on the contest you're in. You know, if you're maxing something, 150 or 20 lineups or something, maybe get a little looser. But um, if you're one to three max type guy or five max type guy, you, you got to make some tough decisions. And, and that's just part of the, the way the mat, I mean, any major works on DK. Since 2016, there's only eight guys that have not played this um, at least once. I don't, I know the whole debutante's not going to win it, but in most cases, those guys are priced in the situation where they don't have to win it. So I don't put a lot into that. They can still do well in the first time here. Um, you know, but, it, you know, experience matters. We just mentioned that. Salary ranges this week 10K. You got six guys in it, assuming everybody plays. Uh, 9K, we got seven guys. 8K, we got 10 guys. 7K, 17 guys. 6K, 45 guys. Um, and if you got, I mean, obviously if, uh, a guy wins today, he'll be added, but depending on who it is, Hoffman may actually get up into seven K range. Most of the time it's a six K guy, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll address that. I'll address it Tuesday on the, uh, Tuesday tidbits pod. If once we figure out who it is sweet 16 for me, same, same format as always, I am going to give a little bonus player in each range. Um, then I'll do the fate of the week, the sleeper of the week, gut fill, betting, one and done, and we get out of here. Uh, tons of content out there. We're going to have a ton of content, so definitely don't want to drag this on, especially with us already doing one pod. 9K and above for me. Um, I'm going to go DJ. I, I really – shock, right? <laughs> I love that we got the ROM news because I think it takes a lot of exposure, potential exposure to DJ away. You say five hundred dollars now, baby swag week. I mean, I think Rom. I think it changes the week because I think it could help JT a little bit. Although JT is still cheaper, but I think the number one person that helps as far as getting a lower ownership this week is DJ. And Rom's got Rom's number one in my my early ranks. Um, but DJ's last four years here: a fourth, a tenth, a second, a first. So I, I I'm not going to ignore that on many different types of Augusta. So, but so is Rom. Rom's 27th, 4th, 9th, 7th. I just love, I got the Rom news early and I'll say, I want DJ as low as I can get him. So I, I think it's huge for me. Had the Rom news not come out, I was potentially going to fade DJ or be very low on him. Um, just with all the unknowns, I think you're gonna have to make some tough calls this week. I'll take DJ over Rom most any week. Um, Baby swag, I get that, but you know, he could also be the other way. He could just relieve, but hadn't been able to focus. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know how to take it for sure yet. I'd like to hear his pressers if he when he gets there. Um, that's gonna be huge when we get to Tuesday and Wednesday. Second for me is gonna be Spieth. I whether he wins or not, his ownership's gonna be up there. 
I wonder how many people will because the 9,400 kind of outthink themselves here. I'm hoping that becomes the case. I do think it's going to be one of the top five owned for sure. If I can avoid some chalk elsewhere, meaning maybe I give up Rom and JT and just say, I'm going to go DJ Spieth or something like that. Um, even when he wasn't playing well, he always played well here. I mean, since 2016, a second, 11th, a third, a 21st. Actually, November was his worst at a 46th, but still made the cut when he was you know, terrible for him. You know, it just has played so well. He's got to be coming in as sky high confidence, whether he wins or not today. But I like him. I'm going to be on him. I'll just get different elsewhere. Rory's my third one. Um, I just think because he's going to be, I think he'll be the lowest own in the 10K range. Um, maybe Scheffler, but I, I, I don't know. I just think and he's not coming in with any kind of confidence. I get that. But he's, he's still finished 10th at API. His last five years here a 10th, a 7th, a 5th, a 21st, and a 5th. So. I'll take a low-owned guy like that that's one of the best in the world um, any day of the week. My bubble boys, so here's what I'm going to give you two in each category, is Rom and Brooks. Rom, because I want to see what the industry gets like with his ownership. Is he going to be high? I'm pretty confident I'll be light or full fade of Bryson, and then I'm going to full fade or be light on either Rom or JT. Those are the two I'm going to make that decision on. Brooks is just going to be, is he in? Is he healthy? I, I don't – even if he is because he hasn't played, no practice, yada, yada, I think a lot of people will avoid him. And so he's a great MME play this week at a low ownership, give you leverage on the field type of deal. 8K range. Uh, first up, Hovland. Love Hovland this week. 8,700. He's my top ranked guy in this range. Um, played it in 2019, finished 32nd. So he's at least played it, even though he didn't get to make it in 20. Coming in with okay form, um, especially T.D. Green, he's doing well. He's actually ninth in the field for me on that. So I like everything about him this week, especially the price. I'll be overweight on Hovland. Next is Scheffler. I, I paused on him because I'm like, man, he he's grinding out this weekend. Made the cut, did well. Um, probably, it probably finished pretty decent this week. Um, now he gets to go to the Masters. Now he did play in November, got a 19th. He hasn't seen it in its prime, so – you say fatigue, but, man, these guys are so young. and He's one of the youngest. So, uh, 8,400, I like him this week. I kind of hope he goes kind of overlooked in a way. I'd prefer him just to do an average round today. I don't want him, like, shoot, like, six under, shoot up there, and then all of a sudden he's like, man, he finished second at match play, and then maybe a top backdoor top ten today, a lot more eyes on him. I'd rather get him low owned. Last in the range for me is Berger. I, I don't know if he's going to go overlooked this week. Uh, 8,500. He didn't get to play in 20 because of the, you know, the way they cut it off. He didn't play in 19, but three years prior to that, he was 10th, 27th, and 32nd. So pretty good showings. 8,500 gives a lot of leverage there with him as far as a top 20 is pretty good for that. Top 15, great. You know, top 10, perfect. We don't have to have a winner at a burger, and I think he can win. Had a ninth at TPC. I like burger this week. I hope he kind of goes on the radar. My two bubble boys are Fitzpatrick and Matsu. Um, Fitzpatrick's just coming in with – you know, okay form, pretty good two outs. The last time out, though, a 10th at API, a 9th at TPC. A lot of them putter, which that's just how he is in general. Um, I got him 11th in putting stats here. But the last five years here, he's made the cut every time. A 7th, a 32nd, a 38th, a 21st, and a 46th. 8100 bucks. Not much to hate there. I just, you know, I can't fit them all in, so he was on the bubble. Matsu showing some signs. I like to see him finish a little stronger today. He was kind of limping in. He's been up and down this week, made the cut, creeped into the top five at one time. And his history here is really, really good. A 7th, an 11th, a 19th, a 32nd, and a 13th. I, I like him here. If he can just get a little momentum going into next week, I like him even more, but that's why he's on the bubble, boy. I want to see how he finishes out this tournament. 7K range for me. Start with Willie Z. I'm just going to be on him. I'm not lock button or anything, but 7,300 for him. That's just, it's, I'll take that all day, every day. I know he hasn't played here much or at all, but, but 7,300, I just need to make the cut. You know, I think he's got the ball striking game to make the cut. He's got the link to get up there and attack these par fives. So, I'll be on him. Neiman, 7K for me is really kind of the easiest one. I know there's going to be a lot of options there, but I love Neiman. Uh, watched him here in 18. Didn't get to play uh, because of COVID in, in November. Good form coming in, a 29th, a 25th at TPC and Honda. 11th overall on the form side. Great price for him. Again, make a cut, give me some upside. Those are the kind of guys I'm looking for. Last is Molinari. 
7K is a really good price for him, and that, that's really why I'm on him. Showed some life, was coming back. He did miss a cut at API and TPC, but I mean, he wasn't horrible, and those are tough tournaments this year, so I'm not holding that too much against him. I hope that really keeps that ownership depress- or you know down, so I think that will allow him to be a great piece in what could be like some chalky builds. Remember, we don't have to be different in six different spots. One or two can make a difference in a lineup. In his last four years here, a 33rd, a 20th, a 5th, obviously when he lost to Tiger, had the lead there on the back nine, um, and a miscut in November, but he was nowhere near in form in November like he is right now. Um, and again, like I don't need him to win at 7,000. He's shown he's got top 20 potential here. That's all I'm looking for. And then the bubble boys for me is Homa and Casey. Casey, because I think he's going to be uber chalky. I like him. There's nothing not to like him about him. Coming in with a 10th and a 5th, I just think at the pricing, $7,700, bucks, he's he's really going to be high owned, and that may be a spot I want to get leverage on. And then Homa, you know, played well. Um, when you listen to his pod right after the Masters, you know, he talked about the confidence he gained and some things. You know, he's very close to making the cut. I think he missed it by one. Um Played great coming in here. Missed the cut at TPC, but a 10th at API. Uh, I just like his game in general for the course. I'll see if he gets popular. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's so many options there. I don't, I don't worry too much about it. Not like Casey or anything, but Homa could be a good option at 7,100. 6K range, I'm going to start it with Connors. I, I, a guy I do worry about being a little bit high owned for his price. A 46th and a 10th. So even though he played better in, in the 2020 version in November. I still like that he made the cut, was around in 2019, has seen this course in that kind of condition. So I don't hate that. Great form coming in here. Um, a third at API, a seventh at TPC. He's actually third on my list. I think he's four under going into today, so he could easily get a backdoor top 10. Uh, he's probably top 20 right now going into it, so I don't know if backdoor, but a good round today. I really would even bump him higher for me. Kokrak at 6,900 as well. I think he could be a good pivot to Connor. So if you're looking to be a little different, um, good form coming in. An eighth at API, a ninth at TPC. We know he's long. He can attack par fives. I liked it. He's at least seen the Masters in November, albeit that was the only time. Um, but at 6,900, I'm not too worried about it. I just need him to make a cut. and He's got scoring upside as well. And he can get on birdie runs. So I, I like that. Um, he's a guy I got noted to go back and look at his whole by whole performance a little bit from 2020, not putting a lot into it. I just kind of want to see how he played, but I do like Kokrak this week. Last, uh, is Siwoo Kim 6,700 surprisingly a really good record here. I, I don't know why I say surprisingly. I, I think he's, he's just better than what everybody envisions him because he has such the big blow ups or, you know, withdrawal, miscut, whatever. But a ninth at TPC, his last four years here, a miscut in 2017, a 24th, a 21st, and a 34th. So I, I really like that he's, you know, top 34 or better the last three years here. I think he's coming in playing really well. So 6700 is a great price for him. I like him this week. My two bubble boys is Cam Champ. Showed a little life here. Um, he's been up and down as well, kind of like Matsu at uh, Valero. Looked like he had a little wrist deal going on. I, that's the only thing I want to keep an eye on him. That's why I put him here, but played tremendous here. In November, if you remember, he he, he was on the I think he was on the fifty thousand dollar team for me that Sunday as well, and it's because but he only shot like one under, but he had like seven birdies or maybe six birdies and eagle and like seven bogeys or something crazy. Um, I think he had a double, two doubles or something like that on part threes, but he still you know birdies and bunches. So I don't think he could necessarily do that again in these kind of conditions, but. A 19th finish, seen the course. As long as there's no injury concerns at 6,600, he's a great potential to, to get that scoring that we need. Even though he may blow up here or there, I think he can score enough um, to to do well here. And this course kind of fits him. And so wasn't coming in with great form at all, but showed some life this week. At 6,600 bucks, he's a guy I'm willing to take a chance on. And Palmer, you know, 6,500, hasn't played here. That's probably the one knock. But that cheap – at his level, I think he's actually underpriced in this field. Um, playing well, 17th at TPC. He's playing well here at Valero. See how he finishes this week, but he'll be high on my list as well. My fate of the week, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be probably Bryson. Um, early in the week, I'll update this Wednesday, but as a guy, I just – I get it. and I think he's going to wind up being popular again. The ROM news will probably, will probably change that a, a hair, but – he just hasn't done well here. And I think it really comes down to that short game and the putting and all that. Bucks and I talked about a little bit. I just, 
you know, until he kind of shows that figures it out part, I'm not too worried about dodging that. I'd rather just take, you know, DJ, I'd rather take Rom for 200 more, me personally. So I'll be off Bryson or light on him at best. And then my sleeper is Wolf. I, I like some of the signs of life we saw at the match play. Went on. I mean, he can score with the best of them, especially on par fives. He's got the link. Um, got to play it in November, so at least he's seen it, been around there, kind of got that out as well. He'll probably be 3 or 4% at most around that. He's around a price point of 7,100. All those guys I mentioned above, I think, will, will garner much more ownership or just right below him. So I like him a lot to be a good sleeper this week. Gut fill plays for me, four of them. Reed, you know, I, ha- I can't go a master's pot without talking about Reed. He's down the list a little bit when you just look at everything, but he plays well at this course. I, you know, I'm going to play him. I'll have some of them. I don't know if he makes the core per se, but definitely MME worthy. Garcia, same. I think he's coming in with really good form, as good as form as he's had since he won. Back to back missed cuts after the win, though. Here, but you know, at this course and his his you know that course history in general, that knowledge, I, I like Garcia, especially at 7900. Cam Smith, another guy, just never play hardly anywhere normally but he plays here very well um a fifth a 51st and a second he also had the 55th back in 2016 so he's never missed the cut since 2016 here 8200 i don't know how popular he'll be i you know he's right on that fringe area but i won't play a chalky cam smith but he's someone i'm gonna keep my eye on and then the last one i kind of uh you know bucks kind of mentioned him the other day and it i you know i was like man that makes sense and it's bobby mcintyre you know the lefty he, you know, when you look at his game, and I, I can see him doing well here at 6,500. He's there's just not enough data for him to rank out well, but he could be a manual adjustment on the final ranks. Don't have to have a lot of them, and certainly, you know, not spinning up for him. So 6,500, I like him a lot as a gut filled play. Um, shout out to Bucks on that one. Top five that pop and two long shots betting segment provided by Monkey Knife Fight. We'll have some stuff going on for them. Use the code GUPS, G-U-P-S, for 100% match up to 50 bucks. I'll have my plays for the full tournament and nightly, um, like I do with every big tournament for Monkey Knife Fight. So go check that out. Just go deposit. You can deposit 50 bucks or more, and you'll get 100% match on the 50. Uh, if you want to put 20 in, they'll match 20. Whatever you want to do, use G-U-P-S on that, monkeyknifefight.com. So I'm going to go off current odds. You know, I've already released three or four plays to the community over the last couple months. But at a current odds, ones that pop for me, um, Cantley 22 to one Hovland 33 to one uh, Neiman's free bet of the week. I like that at 66 to one. Uh, go ahead and lock that in burger 40 to one and Reed 30 to one. I wouldn't, I would, I don't, the <laughs> speech number is already blown down. Um, we have it at 45 to one, but, Hoffman, I don't even know if you can get it out there. I don't think there'll be a lot of like, I think it's okay to wait is what I'm saying for these odds to reshuffle till tomorrow. I don't think any of these guys are going to lose value overnight. So I would wait before I bet at all um, until everything reshuffles tomorrow with the field. But those are the five I like. And those numbers may get a little bit better, especially with you got a Brooks and a Rom. I think Rom's going to get peppered um, with the baby swag stuff. Uh, Two long shots I like. Kokrak mentioned him early, 100 to 1, and Homa 100 to 1. I kind of, a third in there, bonus will be Champ. I mean, he's like 150. I'll probably have at least a top five on him, um, but I don't mind that either as a long shot. One and done. This is, I mean, this is where you've hopefully you've been planning, saving, um, and you really just go with who you think is going to win it. If you still have the guy, I, w- I would hope you do. Um, DJ, Rom. Rom will probably be extremely popular in the one and done. So if you want to be a little bit different, even a Shoffley, uh, Rory's a guy that, is good enough to win this for sure and probably be lower owned than that. Cantley is a guy I take a strong look at. Brooks would be a perfect leverage play. Um, even Reed, one here, done well. Uh, all those guys are in play this week. As always, Kenny will be joining me for E9. I will get the time out there. Probably will be around that 5, 30, 6 o'clock Eastern time on Wednesday. Looking forward to that. Um, I'll have my Tuesday tidbits pot out. Uh, obviously, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Movers and Shakers update. Uh, nonstop coverage tomorrow will be kind of – we're ahead of the game because we've got this stuff out, but I'll be grinding on the newer rankings with all the, the Valero data brought in and just kind of tidbits and then um, taking the industry in. Everybody kind of gets their pods out a little bit earlier so we can start trying to picture some ownership stuff just off of what we hear. It's going to be a great week. Come join us. Masters gets you 30% off, seven-day free trial, no risk there. 
Uh, I know you'll enjoy it if you come check out the community. You get in Slack and everything for that. Uh, so give us a try out. Again, Masters gets you 30% off that. Don't forget to go rate and review us on iTunes, Drawings Tuesday. And like us, subscribe to us on YouTube. Leave us a comment of who you want to fade in the 10K range. I'll give those away on Wednesday's pod. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed Sunday and a happy Easter.